Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today I have an exciting new vehicle behind me and that is the 2025 Chevy Traverse High Country, which is an all new trim level to the Traverse's lineup. Now, if you guys have followed along on the channel and seen some of my other videos, and you'll know the Traverse was all new for 2024, came in four distinctive trim levels, but the High Country, uh, which was available in the previous generation, was actually absent from the lineup. Now for 25, they made a few tweaks to packaging and trim levels, which I do have a dedicated separate video here on the channel covering all that in a little bit more detail, but they removed the base LS from the lineup and added the High Country, and the High Country essentially slots between the Z71 and that of the fully loaded RS. However, this is much closer to that of the RS, given it is essentially the exact same core features, options, and equipment, minus the panoramic power sunroof as standard. However, this one behind me does have it added back as an additional up upcharge, which brings the MSRP between the High Country and the RS very, very similar. In fact, I think they're almost identical. It's just whether or not you want the High Country appearance in terms of the exterior interior design or that of the sportier aesthetic of the RS. But let's not waste any more time. Take a look at what the new High Country trim level has to offer, finished in the nice Stardust metallic exterior for just over $58,000. So take a look at the Traverse High Country in front of us. As I mentioned, this one is finished in the Stardust metallic exterior with the jet black and sky cool gray leather on the inside. Now I apologize for the heavy overcast today, but maybe this gives you a slightly different perspective as to what the Stardust or the more purple exterior color has to offer on this vehicle in cloudy weather. Now, as I was mentioning, the RS in the High Country is extremely uh, is similar in terms of the core equipment that it has. It's basically just a slightly different appearance between the two, different wheel designs, different chrome exterior uh, trim pieces and things like that. So up front, you'll find full LED lighting standard on every single Traverse with your LED running lights and turn signals up top with your LED projector headlights in that separate housing down here. Now immediately you can see more of that chrome trim does make its way onto this vehicle uh, around the gold bow tie. You have the nice chrome slots across the entire front fascia and even around the headlamp bezels. But down below, you'll still find a good amount of gloss black trim at the lower front fascia that wraps into the side profile of the vehicle, which is a change from the previous generation, which used a lot more body color. Front rear side parking sensors standard on this vehicle with the 360 surround view camera system as well. Now coming to the side profile, I know it's a little bit hard to see with the contrast and this exterior body color, but all of this is gonna be the same gloss black plastic trim as the RS, which I have a dedicated video on the channel. And you will find separate, different design, 22 inch alloy wheels as standard with a gloss black and machine finish. I actually really do like this wheel design. It's my favorite one within the Traverse's lineup, uh, just because you get a little bit more of that contrast. Now it's gonna be wrapped in a 275, 45, 22 inch continental cross contact LX20 all season tire. Coming up to the mirror caps, these are gonna be gloss black instead of body color with your LED turn center integration, the cameras on the bottom for that 360 camera system. Mirrors, of course, are gonna be heated, auto dimming here on the driver's side and the interior mirror with blind spot detection as standard. You have a little bit of additional chrome trim around the uh, door handles with proximity entry on all four. And then your traverse script is also gonna be chrome on the high country. And then backing up here to the side profile, you can see a lot more of that chrome trim around the roof rails up top and that belt line molding that wraps into the uh, you know far back of the vehicle. Now coming around to the rear end, of course the LED lighting will continue on with your tail lamps, turn signals, and the reverse lights are gonna be found on the lower bumper uh, in that gloss black portion right there. Overall styling, not too much different versus the RS. You still have a lot of gloss black towards the bottom bumper with your rear parking sensors, and you still find the same gloss black trim around the license plate light with your gold bow tie. There's the backup camera uh, with the integrated washer nozzle and the digital rear camera mirror is gonna be found up here near the third brake light, also as standard equipment with your nice high country badging on the passenger side of the tailgate, just to signify that this one is indeed uh, that new high country trim. But overall, you guys left to let me know your thoughts on the appearance of this vehicle down in the comment section below. I absolutely love it. I think the wheel design is fantastic and Chevy did not go overboard with the chrome trim because typically I'm not a huge fan of chrome, but I think this as it sits works very, very well with a, a lot of gloss black, but also just a little bit of bright trim to uh, you know brighten up the exterior just a little bit. Let's go and take a quick look at the window sticker so you guys know exactly how this one is equipped before jumping onto the inside. 
Now take a look at the window sticker. The RS and the High Country, as I've been mentioning, are nearly identical. It's just that the panoramic power sunroof does not come standard on the High Country, but does come standard on the RS. So with this vehicle, you can get pretty much everything that the Traverse has to offer, including the 17.7 inch infotainment system, Google integration, wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay, heated ventilated front seats, heated second row, power release and tilt second row seats for easier access to the third row, and of course the Super Cruise hands-free driving functionality on Apple roadways. Now this one does have the sunroof added back as an additional $1,500, which brings the total MSRP, including destination, to $58,495. So take a look on the interior. As I mentioned, this one has the jet black in sky cool gray interior, which does have unique accents and color combinations specific to the high country, but there is gonna be a darker, more black interior available on this vehicle as well. Now, starting out here on the door pane, you're gonna find a lot of nice premium soft touch materials, which I really do like. So up top, you have a textured black soft touch upper with the sky cool gray armrest portion with the accent stitching. Power windows, mirrors, and locks with all four windows automatic down, but the uh, driver's side is the only automatic up. Power folding mirrors, two-person memory driver's seat with this carbon fiber-esque kind of brown accented trim that wraps into the dashboard also versus the RS's black that fades into red. Power liftgate down below with the Bose premium audio system and a decent amount of lower door storage. Coming to the driver's seat, full power driver's seat, four-way power lumbar, and there you can see more of that brown accent stitching and piping with the lighter insert and then the black leather on the outside. These seats look absolutely stunning in person, especially with this exterior color. And then there is gonna be a look at the dashboard. Now here in the interior of the high country, you're gonna find the same overall feature set and technology as the RS and many of the other trim levels of the Traverse, just with unique styling and aesthetic bits. So in front of the driver, you're gonna find the 11 inch fully digital and partially configurable gauge cluster controlled on the right side of the steering wheel. You can see I have the Google Maps integration up right now, but cycling through some of the different pages, you have your driver assistance page, uh, and then you have the more clean layout with the digital speed readout in the middle, and then cycling back one more time gives you tachometer, digital speed readout, and some other information on both the left and right hand side. Now coming back to the steering wheel, this is gonna be the leather wrap heated steering wheel with the lighter accent stitching, chrome accents on all three spokes, and you can see it does have the Super Cruise integration that does come standard on this uh, vehicle, uh, and does is optional on some of those lower trims, including LT and C71. So you have your Super Cruise, Adaptive Cruise, and Ford Collision, Distance, stuff like that on the left side. And on the right, you have your audio multimedia, digital gauge cluster, and the heated steering wheel right there. Does have paddle shifters for the eight-speed automatic transmission, as well as rockers for your volume and tune adjustment on the uh, infotainment itself. You have rain sense wipers on this vehicle, which is always a nice feature to have. And then there is gonna be the gear shift selection, which is moved from the center console into the column for this latest generation. Power tilt telescopic steering column down here. And then you have your electronic parking brake, vehicle drive mode selection. So this vehicle does have several different modes, including tow haul, snow ice, off-road, sport, and then there's gonna be a normal drive mode for your everyday driving. Engine stop start off button, as well as your gauge dimming and illumination. There you can see that nice trim that matches that of the door panel. Chrome around the uh, AC vents, and there you can see a little gold accent stitching around the dashboard. This vehicle does not have a heads up display, but there is gonna be the red LED light that projects up onto the glass for some of the Ford collision and driver assistance technologies. And then coming over here to the big infotainment screen, this is gonna be the same 17.7 inch screen size with wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Sirius XM, AM, FM, USB, Bluetooth inputs, and of course that Google integration that gives you apps that you can download directly to the head unit, use inside the vehicle, it gives you Google Maps, you have automatic park assist, climate control, 360 camera system, which unfortunately does not take up the entire screen real estate, uh, but has a lot of nice functionality, even Amazon Alexa in here. And the big one is gonna be the Google Maps, which can make absolutely fill the screen and you know gives you all of the full functionality that you find on your smartphone or your you know home computer, anything like that. Now, some of the things that I don't love so much about this system is gonna be your headlight controls are gonna be found up here. So you can see some of the auto high beam assist, uh, dome lights, all of that are gonna be found up here. And then you have your headlights for your you know, main projectors and other quick access controls, including lane keeping systems to the left side. Now you do have a volume and power button up in this area, heated and ventilated front seats, dual zone automatic climate control in the front, 
all at the very bottom of that touchscreen, and then coming down below AC vents and you have physical redundant controls for the dual zone automatic climate, which I really do like down here. Wish the heated seats and uh, ventilated seat buttons were down here, but nice to see that they do have some redundant controls. Wireless charging pad with your USB-A and USB-C data ports down there, 12 volt outlet, two decently sized cup holders with your proximity key that matches that of the last model year. A little bit of additional closable storage if you wanna use that for anything with gloss black trim around it. Nice padded soft touch leather armrest. It does open to reveal a little storage tray, little LED light in there. And as you can see, that is actually quite large in nature if you wanna use that for storing additional items. Now below the center console, you do have another tier of storage. And then coming up top, you do have the black headliner, microphones for your noise cancellation and infotainment system, LED vanity illumination, digital rear camera mirror. Unfortunately, uh, the home link is gonna be located inside of the actual touchscreen rather than up here for the digital camera mirror. OnStar airbag uh, alert sensor, panoramic power sunroof controls with overhead LED illumination. And this vehicle does have a sunglasses holder, which is a feature that you don't normally find in many new vehicles. And there's gonna be a look at the panoramic power sunroof. So that's gonna be a look here at the front seat of the high country. Let's go ahead and take a look out back. So take a look at the second row of the high country. It's again gonna be the exact same feature set as that of the RS. So starting out here on the door panels, you have all of the same soft touch materials that continue on from the front seat, which is always a bonus in my opinion. Decent amount of lower door storage with the Bose premium audio system. And then taking a look at the second row captain chairs, you do have recline and slide adjustments down here, along with the power release to get easier access to the third row. So pressing that button up here or on the backs of the two seats, will allow the seat to tilt forward just like that and allow you to gain you know, easier access to the third row. But of course, you can always go through the middle of the two seats as well. Now stepping inside, the step in height is extremely easy because the door opening is massive and the roof line is fairly high. There is gonna be a quick look at the front dashboard. And in terms of rear seat amenities, you have two cup holders up here, heated rear seats, automatic third zone, tri-zone automatic climate control, and then USB-C charging with a 120 volt outlet just beside that for additional charging or power needs. Mat pockets on both the front seats. Up top, you have your AC vents for both the second and third row farther behind me, LED overhead illumination. And as a whole, I love this interior color with the two-tone effect on the seats. Armrests are gonna be black in color, so hopefully they don't get as dirty. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a quick look at the third row seats using that functionality that I did just mention. Gives you way easier access stepping up like that and then pulling the seat back. And then behind myself sitting in the third row, as you can see the seats all the way back and my knees are pressing up against the seat itself. Uh, you have cup holders back here, USB-C charging, hard touch armrest, unfortunately, so no soft touch, but there you can see the uh, quarter glass windows, AC vents up in the roof with more LED illumination. And it's really not a bad place to be in the third row of the Traverse. As I've detailed in some of my other videos, uh, it's one of the roomier in the segment, bigger than that of the current Hyundai Palisade or Kia Telluride, for example, and uh, is really gonna be usable for full-size adults, at least on you know short to moderate trips. Maybe not so much for the long haul, but uh, really is a nice, comfortable place to be. Now take a look at the cargo area behind the third row with it up. Of course, you have the AutoSense hands-free power lift gate. And then behind the third row, this is another advantage of this particular vehicle because you have a decent amount of actual storage space with over, you know, I would say pushing two feet of space to the back of the seat there. Left side, there's not really gonna be any much, just your rails for some of the accessories. But on the right side, you have your power folding third row seats as well as power release second row. So to fold the seats down, simply hold the button down right there and it will, uh, as you can see, it makes contact with the second row seat. But you can actually fold the second row seat down and then continue folding down the third row and it will allow you to actually fold the entire floor flat as long as the seats are adjusted properly. Now beneath the floor, you have a ton of additional storage space and then beneath this bin, you actually have the integrated temporary spare tire. So you just take out those nuts and it will allow you to access and pull out that spare tire. Always nice to have it located inside of the vehicle and there is gonna be a 12 volt outlet to the right side also. So very spacious, a lot of room on the interior, but let's go ahead and wrap it up here on the passenger front seat. And as you can immediately see, you have the exact same power adjustments here on the passenger side as you do on the driver. So you have height adjustment, including lumbar. And there's a better look at the front dashboard and some of that new uh, high country exclusive trim. 
Glove box is damped, does have LED illumination inside, and it's gonna be a very usable size glove box for additional storage needs. So that is a look here at the interior of the High Country. Let's go ahead and pop this here. Powers this particular vehicle before wrapping this video up. Now under the hood of every single Chevy Traverse, you're gonna find the same 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. This engine puts out 328 horsepower and 326 pound feet of torque either through the front wheels only or all four wheels if you do select all wheel drive. Now in terms of output, this is gonna be an enhancement or an improvement over the outgoing, or I should say already gone 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6 that was underpinned the last generation of this vehicle. And I really haven't got to spend too much time behind the wheel of this uh, powertrain, but I did take it for a quick drive to give you my driving impressions with the Buick Enclave. So make sure you guys check that video out if you guys are curious about what I think and how this vehicle drives. But overall, it is gonna be a power improvement versus that old V6 that was offered. So let's go do it here for this walk around tour of the 2025 Chevy Traverse High Country. And I have to say, this is my new favorite trim level of this vehicle. Now it's my new favorite for a few reasons. I think the exterior appearance, specifically the wheel designs and how they intermixed the gloss black with the body color and the bright chrome accents works extremely well. And I actually prefer this mix versus the last generation that had, like I said, the more body color molding. I think the gloss black contrasts nicely and those wheels are just absolutely very stunning. Uh, in terms of you know the feature set, I think the fact that it's basically identical to the RS without the uh, forcing the panoramic power sunroof on you is also a benefit because I know there's people out there that don't wanna pay and don't use the sunroof. So if you want a high country without that, you can save a little bit of additional money and still get super cruise and everything else the Traverse has to offer minus that. So it comes in just a little bit less than that of the RS trim in specific. But overall, I think this is a very you know good trim level for the Traverse. And I'm glad they brought it back to give you guys just a little bit more option when shopping for one of these vehicles, because I know not everybody liked the RS. I'm sure not everybody like the LT and the Z71, which also had revised packaging for 25. And uh, overall, yeah, I think they did a very good job and it's a pretty luxurious premium interior. Material usage is very good. And I think feature set is very solid as well. But you guys also let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Uh, do you agree, disagree with anything I said, or is uh, there a different trim level that you would prefer if you were buying one of these vehicles for yourself? Like I said, make sure to check out some of the 2024 and updated changes videos I have on the Traverse or other GM products here on the channel. A lot of information coming up over the next several weeks, especially with the LA Auto Show just around the corner. So uh, make sure you guys stay tuned as I may do a few videos on coverage from that, but unfortunately I will not be attending in person. But like I said, I appreciate continued support here on the channel. Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and use that Amazon affiliate link for your Black Friday shopping needs to help support the channel just a little bit further, where I do get a small referral bonus for you guys just simply clicking on that link and then ordering from the uh, website itself. But uh, as always, I appreciate you guys just watching and supporting and hope to see you guys in the next one.